This is the largest movable structure ever built. It's taller than the Statue of Liberty, longer than two jumbo jets, and nearly three times the weight of the Eiffel Tower. This megastructure is the engineering feat of an architect's dreams, and beneath it is a radioactive nightmare. In 1986, a surge of power destroyed one of the reactors at Chernobyl nuclear power plant, leaving behind a toxic disaster. An extreme amount of radiation was leaking into the environment, and by extreme amount, I mean like 400 times more than the radioactive fallout that followed the atomic blast in Hiroshima, Japan. About 200 people were hospitalized immediately, more than two dozen of them died, and at least 115,000 nearby residents were forced to leave their homes. At the time, the long-term effects of the radiation exposure were still unknown. To make matters worse, because of weather patterns, radiation from the Chernobyl disaster spread across the region and far into Western Europe. And what remained at the Chernobyl plant was close to 200 tons of nuclear fuel and radioactive elements emitting lethal amounts of radiation. So, engineers had to act fast to keep more radiation from spreading. In an effort to contain the power plant, an army of workers, known as the Liquidators, started constructing a tomb. The Liquidators worked day and night to contain the worst of the radiation inside the reactor, and then they built a concrete steel sarcophagus around the whole building. It took 206 days, and more than half a million Liquidators who wore little to no protection. The structure was only meant to last 20 to 30 years, and the tomb was never successfully sealed, so there was no way to protect it from the corrosion and environmental damage that happens with anything that's outside. If the structure were to collapse, it's believed that a radioactive dust cloud would be ejected into the atmosphere, and that sort of fallout would be devastating, not only for Ukraine and the surrounding countries, but potentially for the entire planet. To really understand how devastating it could be, we need to dive into some nuclear physics. Spent or used nuclear fuel, like the kind inside the Chernobyl plant, consists primarily of uranium, plutonium, fission products, and minor transuranic elements. Some of the most significant fission products or radioactive isotopes released during the Chernobyl disaster were iodine-131, cesium-137, strontium-90, and plutonium-241. These isotopes can take lifetimes to decay and then be considered harmless. The rate at which they decay is measured by their half-life, which is the time it takes for a radioactive substance to lose half its radioactivity. Now, iodine-131 decays in a matter of days, and cesium-137 and strontium-90 have half-lives of about 30 years. But the real problem child is plutonium-241. While this isotope has a half-life of only 14 years, the isotopes that are formed during its decay are terrifying. It decays into americium-241, which has a half-life of about 432 years, and then americium-241 breaks down into neptunium-237, an incredibly stable isotope, which sounds good, but it's bad. It has a staggering half-life of 2.14 million years. Essentially, this means that if the old structure covering Chernobyl were to collapse, our planet would probably never recover from the fallout. Since this would be an international disaster, it needed an international solution. So more than 40 different countries, along with engineers, architects, and financiers, stepped in and contributed to Plan B. B as in big. Really, really big. The new safe confinement, or NSC as it's called, is large enough to entomb the old Chernobyl sarcophagus. The massive arch is made of multiple layers of rust-proof stainless steel, and it's designed to withstand extreme temperatures and even natural disasters. This space between the inner and outer cladding is incredibly important. It holds a complex ventilation system, which regulates humidity, temperature, and pressure, and that will prevent corrosion and keep radioactive dust from escaping the structure. One of the greatest challenges was deciding where to build this giant tomb. Because of the radiation leaking from the damaged plant, the structure couldn't be constructed directly over it. So to keep workers safe, they built the NSC in two halves, 300 meters away from the power plant. And this is where the major engineering feat comes in, because the arch needed to be moved over the reactor. And moving a 35,000 ton structure has never been done before. Each of the halves were lifted at separate times and moved onto specialized rails. Once they were connected, the arch then inched its way very carefully over the existing sarcophagus. 
Now the challenge is to seal this giant tomb, which is expected to be completed by late 2017. And then remotely operated cranes inside the arch will begin dismantling the unstable old sarcophagus. The new safe confinement is expected to last at least the next 100 years, but damage from the Chernobyl disaster is irreversible. Today we're starting to understand the human cost of nuclear fallout as cancer rates and other health impairments rise among people exposed to Chernobyl's radiation. While this feat of engineering showed what could be accomplished when faced with one of the worst disasters in human history, capping a radioactive catastrophe is not a permanent solution. Let's not forget, those radioactive isotopes will still be decaying for millions of years to come. Once the original Chernobyl sarcophagus is dismantled, the radioactive waste will be removed from the site. To find out where radioactive waste is stored, check out this video. Thanks for watching Seeker. Make sure to like and subscribe for new videos.